Hey everyone, welcome back. It's been a bit, but I finally finished the second half of the Companion Builds Guide, Post Rework Part 1. Today's video includes Moas, Kubros, Kavats, Vulpophilas, and Predazites. As you can see, this is also a decent length video, which is why I saved it until now. I have split them this way since non-sentinels are fundamentally different than sentinels. They do not follow you around. Now, hounds were the exception I threw in last video, since I had many asking me to compare it to the Dirga's priming capabilities. Hyper-specific setups that require a particular frame and also a particular companion are not included today. These are just for general companion setups on any frame. But if you want to know all the important stuff right now, well, you've come to the right place. This video will cover the best companion setups, including builds, how to use, mod order importance and why, and other much lesser known info. I would also advise using the timestamps if there are specific things you want to learn on particular companions or utility roles. This is not an exhaustive list, but just everything I've been able to track and test so far. Note that certain bond mods are situational, such as seismic bond for ability efficiency. I won't be mentioning these since, well, you should know when this is worth slotting. As a reminder, Sentinel weapons, which can be used on MOAs, do benefit from galvanized mods. For a full explanation on this, as it is rather convoluted, I would recommend you to check out my previous companion guide post rework about Sentinels at the top right. This only matters if you intend to use your MOA to DPS with a Verglass, or much less so, priming with a Hellstrom. One other thing about pet modding, just like everything else in the game, mod order hierarchy matters. From top left to top right, then bottom left to bottom right. While this is important for modding elements, which most of us know, this is even more important for pet modding, because this determines ability hierarchy. Abilities are casted based off first ability not on cooldown, so more important precept ability should always be slotted higher in the hierarchy. Do note that Manifold Bond is a big highlight of the companion rework that can reduce the cooldown of important companion abilities. As a reminder though, this mod only works on robotics and thus will only be featured on MOAs in this video. It's obvious they don't want it to work with Smita Charm, so I hope in the future it can work with all other companions, as some beast companions would definitely benefit hugely from it. Anyways, let's start off looking at MOAs. There are only four different MOA heads, each coming with their own unique two precepts. However, unlike Kubros, Kavats, Vulpophilas, and Predazites, you are free to mix and match the MOA presets on any head variant. They are not species specific. The drawback though? You're only allowed to use two more precepts at once. Unfortunately, most of them are useless, even post rebirth. It's time for a quick look over them. I'm only going to mention the ones worth considering out of the eight. Stasis Field protects you for 30 seconds, but only has a 5 meter radius and follows the MOA instead of being projected on you. 20 seconds cooldown. Enemy projectiles move 90% slower, which means it does nothing against AoE explosions or hitscan weapons, and they deal 60% less damage. Honestly, I would only really use this if it was buffed to be projected on me instead of the MOA itself. This is an okay precept, but there are better ones. Whiplash Mine is basically a shittier Nautilus Cordon, with one exception. MOAs have access to Armor Strip, whereas Nautilus does not without using bunks. This basically is Ensnare with a 20 meter radius and 3 seconds delay before pulling enemies in. Useful for semi camping and full camping, not that useful for run and gun. This is probably the second best MOA precept, and Manifold Bond lets it spam this. Blast Shield restores max shields plus overshields instantly on cast while also increasing default overshield from plus 600 to plus 3.6k on your MOA. It has a 5 meter knockdown AoE and is spammable with Manifold Bond. This makes your MOA a minimal crowd control source while also making it very difficult to kill due to the max 2.5 seconds shield gate if you bring redirection on it as well. Easily activates reinforced bond for a consistent plus 60% fire rate buff. Note that this does not restore any of your shields just to itself, and manifold bond reduces to 10 seconds cooldown to basically nothing. This is the best MOA precept in my opinion. Hard Engage allows your MOA to use melee using the Sentinel weapon as a stat stick. This melee attack is treated both as a melee and also inherits the traits of the Sentinel weapon. This means it can be a rifle and a melee at the same time. 
AKA, since it forced procs impacts on its kicks, it can trigger internal bleeding on Verglass. The damage is kind of bad, so I wouldn't recommend doing that though. More importantly, Hard Engage triggers Vicious Bond and allows your MOA to armor strip. If you combine this with Hellstrom for gas so that your kick inherits gas typing from Manifold, it does a very good job of AoE armor strip and priming enemies and synth deconstruct procs with a passable amount of AoE damage as well. Mainly just for AoE armor strip since the kicks have multi hits. Perfect for frames that like to cast non nuking but damaging abilities. However, remember that Nautilus cordon groups a lot more consistently and quickly, which can be better if you bring your own armor strip abilities. The only benefit to bringing a MOA for hard engage is meme kick DPS builds, or because you can't afford to bring in an armor strip ability, or Uneru Cossack Strike yourself, or because you want reinforced bond, which Nautilus cannot use well. This is the third best MOA precept in my opinion. Now for my standard MOA setup I use these days, Manifold Bond will reset my Guardian cooldown for Shield Gates. Reinforced Bond is always active so long as you craft a MOA with at least base 343 shields with calculated redirection. This particular MOA I crafted didn't have that, but it doesn't really require much. And you can preview stats before building. Synth Deconstruct triggers somewhat often with Blast Shield and Whiplash Mine for a decent bit of extra health orbs and a bunch of crowd control. Medi Pet Kit cuts revive to 45 seconds, and Momentous Bond is really only here for faster recovery times. The extra element is a bonus for Blast Shield, which will also proc every element your Sentinel weapon has on the AoE due to a Manifold. Now if you want to use Hard Engage, the build changes to like this. If you do not bring grouping sources yourself, then you will have to use Whiplash Mine and bring Pack Leader to keep your MOA alive. If you do bring grouping, you can replace Whiplash Mine with Blast Shield and skip Pack Leader for Reinforced Bond so it can keep itself alive. Do you know this setup gives up Medi Pet Kit so that you can slot both Vicious Bond and Hard Engage for AoE Armor Strip? Remember you have to cast an ability though that deals some kind of damage, even if it's just one, for the Armor Strip to spread. And well, that's it for the MOA stuff. Next up are Kavats and Volpophilas. Kavats are quite different from the rest, so we'll take a look at that first. Remember that Kavats and Volpophilas have unique precepts to their species that cannot be used on other types. The first build doubles as both Adarzas and Smita, which are pets that can only be useful when they're alive. Therefore, the highest priority is to not let them die, ever. An Adarza would use Cat's Eye instead of Charm here, but the rest of the modding would be the exact same. Tech Enhance to extend either buff to last 30% longer. Rank 6 Bite is used to hit the 50% crit chance point to activate Tenacious Bond for plus 1.2 times final crit damage. For survivability, these empty slots can either be Pack Leader and a Flex slot if you're using melee DPS for Overguard, or Metal Fiber plus Enhanced Vitality for 1500 armor and 1365 health on gun DPS setups. Use Link Armor and Health if it's better. Synth Fiber has a second important role though here besides just armor. Of course max it out, but holstering a weapon with Synth Set causes holster reloading to start. Kavats cannot normally reach 1200 shields. Synth Set allows every holster reload to tick generate 150 shields, meaning every single time you swing your melee on a bullet hose gun, your companion instantly regens all shield and plus 600 overshield. All thanks to Reinforced Bond. While Beast Companions get hit regularly, which means unlike Sentinels, these will not have 100% uptime on Reinforced Bond's buff if they cannot reach 1200 shield max naturally, this is still the ultimate Kavat build to make sure they never go down. The Vasca Kavat is superseded by all Volpophilas and there isn't really a reason to build one these days. The Panzer specifically does its job better with Martyr Symbiosis to keep you alive, and all Volpas have Devolution mods as well. But if you really want to build a Vasca, its main highlight is being able to revive you with no animation timer when it reaches you, unlike, say, Sacrifice from Sentinels. Therefore, we will build around that. Now, while you can use similar builds to the Darzar and Smita setup I showed earlier, just swapping out Charm or Cat's Eye for Transfusion and using the Flex for Loyal Companion, this is an alternative build I came up with that also offers Armor Strip. Swipe allows your Vasca to hit more enemies per attack, triggering Vicious Bond more times. Combined with Tandem Mod, this also allows it to add a fair amount of combo to your melee. Do you note this mod combo requires 3 slots to do AoE strip quickly while also buffing melee? Now you can put this on any Kavat, but mod space may suffer on Adarzas and Smitas. If you're playing a melee build, Pack Leader can keep your Vasca alive easily with Overguard. 
Otherwise, I would recommend using Enhanced Vitality or Link Health here. Swipe allows your Vasca to hit a bunch of enemies in AoE Strip, easily proccing Synth Deconstruct for more health orbs. You will not be able to stack armor with Metal Fiber or Link Armor unless you give up Tandem Bond. Loyal Companion makes Vasca invincible for 10 seconds when you drop below 35% HP. You do get 75% damage reduction for 10 seconds, but the main draw is making sure your Vasca will be able to reach you and revive without getting killed itself. Do note this has a 60 second cooldown, so you can't rely on it too much. Vulpophyllas are the next set of companions. The Crescent Vulpophyla precept is garbage, so do not use it. I would also not recommend using the Sly Vulpophyla because the evasion presets it has are incredibly niche. No, it does not stack additively with Zaku's dodge stat, it is multiplicative. Also, the precept has way too many restrictions, and it cannot be refreshed as well as going on a 5 seconds cooldown only after the effect expires. Anyways, we just looked at Vasca, so let's look at its power creep, the Panzer, first. Viral Quills is still used because it primes enemies for Viral, spreads by itself all over the place, and every tagged enemy also counting as a pet assist for Synth Deconstruct for a ton of health orbs. Martyr is still there to save you if you screw up, and Devolution to give itself a 30 seconds revive timer instead of 60 while still priming Viral. Bite is present at rank 6 because like all other Kavats and Valpophylas, Panzer has a base 20% crit chance and can activate Tenacious Bond without Hunter Synergy. The Armor Strip Trio combo Swipe, Vicious Bond, and Tandem Bond are here to do AoE Strip and build melee combo at the same time. If you do not need the Armor Strip, I would recommend dropping Swipe and Vicious Bond for Reinforced Bond plus Calculated Redirection. Since Vulpophyllas have base 370 shields, they pass 1200 with redirection to permanently activate Reinforced Bonds plus 60% fire rate buff. If you want both Armor Strip and Reinforced Bonds buffs though, then you will have to give up Tandem Bond and Synth Deconstruct's Energy Economy bonuses instead. Now Synth Deconstruct also doubles as a Synth Set mod, so I'd recommend leaving it on, meaning if you have a Bullet Hose weapon to holster, every reload tick will proc Reinforced Bond's Shield Restore, basically making your Panzer instantly start regenerating shields and easy access to Shield Gate resets for improved survivability. Next on our list are Kubros. Unfortunately, because Beasts cannot use Manifold Bond, Kubros fall very far behind in the meta. The main draw of Kubros these days are still access to the Mecha Set, which is by far the best pet DPS nuking tool we have. Since this has no interaction with the new Bond Mons, I'm going to instead focus on how unique precepts interact with the new Bond Mons, and you'll be able to fit Mecha Mons in and the Flex slots. I'll go over all Kubro variants very quickly first. The Chisa Kubro sucks, because its precept allows it to only disarm one enemy at a time and get extra loot from a single body every 10 seconds. Unless you're farming Grove Spectres or something, there is zero use for this. The Sunika Kubro precepts can do finishers, which is useless, because there are better ways for Kubros to kill. They can also pin down VIP targets, except this doesn't work against Acolytes and Demlists, which are the only VIPs we'd care to pin down. The Saasa Kubro's garbage for standard tile sets and okay for open worlds. This is because the Dig precept can only be used when the player is out of battle. AKA, indoor tile sets basically almost never have this precept active. Also, we have a million ways to get energy these days already. It also has a finisher precept, which is, as I said before, useless. Now the Raxa Kubra has a 24 meter AoE Terrify that stuns up to 15 enemies for 16 seconds. Sadly, this has a 40 second cooldown. If Manifold Bond worked on Kubros, this would actually be amazing with a shorter cooldown. And its Protect Precept regenerates at least 300 shields split across two casts for both itself and the player. This has a 10 seconds cooldown after the double cast. With Manifold, this could be spammable and a really good tool for survivability. The day Manifold is allowed to work on beasts is the day Raxa Kubro shines. Now the Huras Kubro is currently the only one worth using in Part 1 rework due to the stealth it brings. Perfect for ability-based combat since it only breaks on weapon shots or swings. Yes, it can deactivate if everything is dead within 24 meters, but it reactivates quickly. Its Hunt precept is useless though, as it does zero damage and knocks enemies away. The Helmet Charger precepts are useless due to either single target grappling or low damage ceiling. The main advantage of the Helmet Charger is super buffing melee builds with Strain Infection and Set Bonus to spam stack cysts. No, Nidus' cysts and Larva do not interact with the Helmet Charger. Its only purpose is for melee spam Hell Tank setups and also works well with grouping due to Strain Eruption. 
Otherwise, Charger builds will look identical to the following Curas Kubro build, just replacing Tandem Bond and Stock with Strain Eruption and Strain Fever since you'll be spamming melee attacks the entire time anyways. For Huras Kubro, I will show the build I used in my recent Garnu video, which has a few tweaks. The main benefit of Huras versus other companions is stealth, and access to tandem bond to build melee combo, even if you don't attack, easily maintaining combo and comfy for problematic cases, like Gar Shattered Lash not building combo on hits or Baruch's hitbox issues with Serene Storm. But do know that tandem can be used on any beast companion and using Baruch's fists will break invis. Really, Kuras Kubro is just for an ability nuke frame that wants invisibility to help with survivability. Synth Fiber with Reinforced Bond allows you to holster reload spam when invis breaks by accident so that you can run off and disengage with shield gate spam on your pet so it doesn't die. Then, you can re-enter the fray when you become invisible. You cannot shoot with stock active without breaking it, so the 60% fire rate bonus is useless. Tenacious Bond can grant plus 1.2 times final crit damage to pseudo exalts with Hunter Synergy. It takes 30% of your final crit value on a primary stat stick weapon and adds it, letting you hit 50% CC on a Huras. Yes, the Hunter Synergy bug for Tenacious Bond was fixed yesterday, and it no longer needs bite. If you're not using a pseudo exalt and nuking with a standard ability, you can drop both Tenacious and Hunter Synergy for a Mecha Overdrive and Mecha Recharge instead for a Mecha Nuke setup. Momentous Bond is only here for easy revimes if it still somehow dies, and if you're instead interested in a Kubro Nuke setup, where they are the main source of DPS, I will direct you to my recent Kubro Nuke setup video. Just make sure to squeeze on Duplex Spawn somewhere on the Build Now's post update so you have three Nuke Dongs running around instead of just one. Maybe Duplex Bond over Tandem Bond and Mega Overdrive over Stock. Our final set of companions are Predazites. These also have quite a few issues due to no access to Manifold Bond. I will once again be going over their precepts first, then appropriate builds. Predazite precepts are also species specific and cannot be used on other Predazites. The Vizier Predazite precepts are not that useful. Acidic Spittle is single target and blinds an enemy for 12 seconds. If it was AoE, it would be useful. I didn't test if this works on Acolytes or Xmas units, but there are many more reliable ways to crowd control Xmas units and Acolytes, like Breach Surge, Muzzle Flash, Silence, and Magus Lockdown for Acolytes specifically. Yes, Breach Surge and Muzzle Flash blinds bypass Xmas Overguard. Iantric Mycelium is a flat 300 health heal. This was only useful for healing Necromex before Necromex Repair existed. Hard skip on Vizier. The Pharaoh precepts also look good on paper, but they don't actually work properly. Endoparasitic Vector frequently misses. The Pharaoh looks on in advance and launches a larva after a 2 seconds wind up, but at that spot it aimed at 2 seconds ago. It does not group up enemies and doesn't even slow anything within 5 meters like it's supposed to. It only applies viral procs to the hit target and only sticks around for a few seconds. Anabolic Pollination makes fart clowns that last 6 seconds and grant a 5 seconds plus 100% toxin buff. Yes, the buff only lasts for 5 seconds. The only Predazite worth looking at today is the Meje. Infectious Bite lets you deal more damage to something that survives a pet finisher, which it shouldn't. So this sucks. But Paralytic Spores is an AoE 16 meter stun that lasts 3 seconds with a 10 seconds cast cooldown. Any enemy hit in the AoE are open to finishers, making it a solid backup choice for finisher setups and light like crown control. Imagine this with Manifold Bond if it works within the future. So let's look at that final Menjay build. As the main reason to use a Menjay Predazite is for finisher builds, I will assume you're doing a melee DPS setup. This means your guns are primers, and I can assume a stat stick primary weapon for Hunter Synergy to get us above 50% CC. This is because Predazites only have base 10% crit chance like Kubros, and cannot activate Tenacious Bond with Bites alone. You will need a primary that reaches at least 134% crit chance to activate this mod without Bite equipped. Incarnate modes with higher crit chance work too, since it pulls from the current active state of your weapon. Most finisher setups have Force Proc Slash. You will want to combine this with the mecha set, with the other two mechas on your Warframe for the full 4 set piece 30 meter nuke. All mecha kills are also considered pet assists, so we slot Synth Deconstruct to produce a ton more health orbs. While the mecha mods can be rank 0, I strongly recommend maxing out Synth Deconstruct. Predazites have base 350 shields, so calculated redirection is enough to push them above 1200 for reinforced bond. Synth Deconstruct also doubles as Holster Reload Synth bonus to constantly proc the reinforced bond 150 shield regen on every reload tick. 
This helps to keep your pet alive by stacking with Pack Leader for doubling up on Overguard Gate and Shield Gate resets on a melee spam build. Paralytic Spores will help to open enemies up for finishers as well as light crowd control on top of any other methods you use for finisher openers. And that's it. Thank you for checking out my second half companion guide covering all the Moas, Kubros, Predazites, Kavats, and Vulpophilas. There's been an insane amount of work put into this, and I'm glad I can finally show you everything. Thanks again to everyone that helped out, and I hope this information was useful. If you're wondering why I lean so heavily into pet survivability and mentioned the synth set reinforce bond holster reload tech so often in this video, but not in my sentinel video, it's because MOA and beast companions have rather bad AI and draw a lot more aggro to themselves to get killed than sentinels. Hence, the synth set reload tech, while perfectly usable on sentinels and useful to activate reinforce bond on anything that wasn't worm, was not as necessary. DE has confirmed that Part 2 Companion Rework will not ship until 2024, which is also the charm nerf. So expect all the info in this video and my Sentinel one to be fully up to date for the several next months to come. If you haven't seen my Sentinel and Hounds Companion Rework guide, I strongly recommend to check it out for all the cool things you can do with them. Cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always, as soon as possible. Like I've done with the Dagus and Companion Rework updates. Stick around you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.